Yeah, it was great. Um, it wasn't the way we talked about or drew it up to start, but um, a lot of times it's not how you start, but how you finish. And I thought the guys, again, the, the talk uh, in the locker room and, and um, on the bench was just to continue to keep working the game. Uh, that we knew we couldn't just shoot one 20-point shot. We just had to work the game, and I thought our defense got us back in the game, and then we started to make shots. But um, trust for uh, the whole team, for Luca, the trust down the stretch. Exum steps up and makes a big shot. But just the trust with the double teams and the guys who got into the center of the, the defense and being able to make plays and P.J. being able to knock down two threes there late. What do you preach the way our team doesn't give up, the way that they can give up? Yeah, I think it's just about um, just the trust and, and the talk and just the understanding that we have each other's back. Um, no matter what's happening, uh, if you're not shooting well, there's always the encouragement that you can make the next shot. Um, just understanding that we're playing for something bigger than just the, the back of the jersey, that we're playing for one another. And you can see that the chemistry in the team, um, when you look at the celebration at the end, um, just understand that it took it takes a long time to build that. Um, and that just doesn't happen overnight. But the beauty of Kai and Luca hugging there at the end, of just the trust. Um, but those two trust in their teammates that they were out on the floor um, was huge. You said before the game, you guys don't use, don't use excuses. But uh, what did you see from the guys? Yeah, everybody's tired this this part of the, the year. Um, also, give credit to Houston; they're fighting for their life, and uh, and just just understand that we knew that coming in that they were going to give us their best shot, and they did. Um, but we we took it and uh, found a way to win. Um, yeah, guys, everybody could be tired, but as uh, we get closer to mid-April, uh, all that goes away because it's the next season. And so for us, we have to close out this season on a positive. We got now a road trip to go play Charlotte and Miami so we can continue to work on our habits and get better. Coach, what does this win say about Charles' ability to battle adversity coming back from 20 plus? Yeah, I think uh, just that this is a team effort as much as <laughs> you look at Kai having 48 and then uh, – Looking at uh, Luca having 37, it was everyone. Um, Exum makes the big shot. Um, I thought the execution late game, um, we got the foul. We got lucky with the missed free throws. And then Kai had a great look, um, you know, to be able to tie it. Um, and so just uh, what the guys are doing this time of the year is, is big, and we're going to need that going forward. Coach, what do you think about Luca in uh, the Brooks matchup? Brooks was, you know, all over all game long. Luca fighting. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, that you know, Brooks. That's what he does. He comes and takes a challenge um, every night against the best uh, offensive player. Um, and so, Luca isn't. That's not nothing new for Luca. Um, he's seen him a lot in Memphis. Now sees him a lot uh, with Houston. Um, those two enjoy uh, going back uh, and forth against each other. Um, and so, it's a it's a great matchup uh, for fans. It's a great matchup for players. And so, uh, it, it was good. It, it's healthy for the game. Feels like a long time ago, but when the offense wasn't clicking in, in the first quarter, what what did you see that that was going wrong, and then what changed? Yeah, uh, maybe the two thirty start. <laughs> we normally are better in the afternoon games for whatever reason. This year, we haven't been as as good at getting off to a start. Um, no, I, I think you give uh, Houston credit; they came out and uh, was aggressive. But the the beauty of uh, of that locker room, no one cave no one let go of the rope no one quit we just kept working and um, and I think the the hard work and trust and the belief that those guys have in that locker room paid off and it just continues to get stronger how, how much do you guys also rely on you know just the, the Luca and Kyrie shot making to overcome that yeah able to overcome a deficit like that well, those two, Kai got going, and so did Luca too, too. But like Kai, you know, having fifty, almost fifty points, we're going to rely on those two, and that's what you should do. But I think also just understanding um, when to go. Kai understands when it's time to go, um, and then understands when to play off of Luca, and it's a beautiful thing to, to watch and be a part of. But also just the trust of they're going to get double teamed for them to be able to trust that the next person is going to make the right play. Um, to start, I think the fourth quarter, we we turned the ball over twice. Um, but again, no one got off, no one you know was upset. We just understood we had to get stops and then we had to get shots. Specifically on Irving, uh, this was his high game as a Maverick, and then you factor in what he's done for the 
last month and the Denver game. How would you kind of put into words what he's done this past month? Everything we expected him to do. He's one of the best players in the world. And so um, he is playing the game um, at a high level. He is in a great place. Um, the energy um, is, is extremely high. The vibe is good. And so uh, he's doing uh, everything that we expected him to do, and uh, he's doing it at a high level. He's making the game easy for Luca, but also the other four who are on the floor, and it, it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah. What do you think of Dante Exum's poise? Just he always seems to be making the timely play, especially as we saw tonight. Yeah, I, I, again, uh, Exum, the trust, uh, and we've seen this here of late between PJ and Exum guys being able to step up uh, when uh, Luca or Kyrie getting double teamed, um, not afraid of the moment, and that's you know that's great this time of the year. Right, thanks. thanks. So much. Dante, how do you feel knowing that you're responsible for the first overtime game of this season? <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, you know we had an opportunity. Obviously, uh, you know I was talking to a uh, coach in the timeout. I was like, hey, "What's the play? What's the play? What are we doing?" And he said, "Just get it, go." And um, you know, PJ got the rebound, and I, for a split second, I was like, "Do I let PJ get it?" I was like, "No, just go get it." So I just went and grabbed it, and then tried to get the ball to Luca. And obviously, I knew they were going to try and double, so it was just about not getting the offensive foul at first, and then just setting up my feet. And um, you know, Luca's obviously great, knowing that two guys are you know going to double him and you know, trusting his teammates, so. What does that trust mean to you from Luca and Kyrie? Yeah, it's big. You know, I think, yeah, just, I mean, it, it goes back. It's happened a lot throughout the season. Um, you know, just missing one shot and they're coming to you like, yeah, shoot the next one, shoot the next one. And I think just in those big moments when, you know, you need to knock it down, it just, you know, kind of reminds you of, you know, the times that you, um, they've had your, had your back. I know you're joking and talked about 50% shots. <laughs> yeah. But how do you feel to be on the good side of that percentage? Yeah, you know, I, yeah, I, I obviously joke about that, but, you know, it's I truly believe that. So um, it's just a mindset I'm always going to have um, when I'm shooting. So um, if I live up to it, it's obviously perfect. You know, it's a really good percentage, but um, it's just a mindset that I'm always going to have. When Kyrie gets going like that, what, what does that do in terms of, first of all, what's it like to, to see a guy? in that kind of rhythm, and then what to do in terms of kind of the confidence of the team and, you know, the, the feeling of the, uh, as you guys are trying to come back. Yeah, you know, I think, yeah, obviously, I mean, it's, you know, great when you have two players like Luca and, and Kyrie that can go off like that, and um, obviously, you know, when Kai gets in the paint, you know, he's mid-range, three, get into the basket, he can, he can do it all, and, um you know, they're going to have to make adjustments um, at some point. And I think that's when it goes back to the trust of him, you know, throwing the ball to us or, or doing whatever. But, you know, when it's times like that where they're just letting him, you know, cook, like we just let him cook and watch. So, <laughs> How enjoyable was that to, to, to be someone with a, with a front row seat to, to watch him? Yeah, no, it, it, no, obviously it's enjoyable. You know, I think, you know, when he's got it going like that and, um, you know, I've obviously – guarded him in practice and it's tough you know he's so shifty and um, getting to his spots um, and it, he's hard to block um, so you know we trust him with the ball and you know obviously tonight um, he had the hot hand so we you know we threw it to him and you know he produced. You, you guys struggled offensively a little bit to start the game and then you got it going um, how much especially since you're on the weak side when you guys go five out and like how much do you feel the, the difference in spacing and how much of an advantage is it that you have the optionality of of being able to use Maxi there like you did a lot tonight. Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, we had a bit of trouble with, uh, um, you know, kind of their five rolling and getting into that short pocket. Um, but, you know, it's easily adjustments. And um, I think that's the best thing about Maxi. You know, he can adjust to any defense and play at the rim, play out on the on the wing and um, and guard some of the, the quicker guys. Um, so, you know, hats off to Maxi to be able to, um, you know, guard those guys. If you call that cooking, uh, what do you call the following? The final meal. Oh man, uh, hopefully it's just cooking now. And you know, once we get the playoffs, it's you know, it's serving the whole meal. <laughs> so, okay, okay Dante, um, you're, I love your story. We talked about it earlier this year, but you've been over the past couple of years. Um, how surreal is it that you are about to be you know, on a postseason team making big shots like this? Yeah, I think it, it, it always goes, um, back to the confidence, you know, the confidence in my ability. Um, 
you know, I think me making the jump over there wasn't, you know, kind of a, a step down in any sense. It was just a kind of a, a reassurance thing to go over there and, you know, show what I can do. Um, and, you know, I'm grateful and happy I was able to do that. And then, you know, obviously be fortunate enough to put myself in a position to, you know, help a team, hopefully in this post postseason. Dante, congrats. Um, what about atmosphere in the you played in Serbia? It's, can you compare this? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it, it was good. I mean, obviously, you know, over in Serbia, it's a different beast. Um, you know, no, no uh, um, dig to the, you know, Dallas fans or everything. You know, it was great in there. But I think, you know, over in Europe, it's just a, it's a different beast. They're chanting and celebrating, you know, have people that are leading the chants that don't even watch the game. They're just making sure they're, they're chanting. So, um, you know, it was great. It was loud in there tonight for sure. But it's definitely a different beast in, in, in Europe. <laughs> Playing in those hostile environments prepared you to have the poise that you do today late in games. Yeah, I definitely think so. Um, I mean, if you've ever played for Partizan and got step into a Red Star gym at, at Peony, it's it's a it's tough. It's tough. You know, it's you know we played a five game series against them and played two away and. Um, definitely a, a tough atmosphere. It just felt like they were on the court with them. So, um, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. And, you know, hopefully once you get to playoffs, you know, that um, – I don't think it will reach that atmosphere um, away. But, um, yeah, definitely prepared me. You said after the shot against Denver that you were kind of feeling it. You were feeling it magic. It was taking place in Serena. And I wondered if you thought today was like a continuation or a carryover from that because uh, – yeah, for sure. It was definitely one of those uh, special moments in Dallas Mavericks history here at the AAC and got a chance to come back down or come back from 22 down and just work our, our way back into the game and just continue to trust our work. So it felt good. Um, yeah, tough one tonight, man. Tough one. Uh, I mean, it's an exciting feeling because uh, almost the defensive adjustments are predictable. You know, you just drive right or drive left and they're sending help either from the baseline or from the other side of, of the paint and want to stop you. So it gives uh, my teammates and also when Luca gets double, it gives myself opportunities to attack with uh, numbers on our side. Uh, so I, I just really welcome that and... Um, you know, when the ball is in my hands and I don't see anybody coming to double, then that's my time to be aggressive. And teammates kept putting the ball in my hands. Um, I had the matchup tonight, so we're just taking full advantage of it. And I, I had some easy ones go for me tonight and, you know, just continue to feed off uh, the good energy, man. But it was a total team effort tonight, really. I mean, we, we left it all out there on the floor tonight. You could feel that. Uh, it's just one of those in the moment type things, to be honest with you. But um, as a competitor, you're so emotional about you know, this game. It's not really a game to us. You know, when you're out there and you're putting, you know, blood, sweat, and tears into it and being physical. And of course, we feel the fans and we feel the atmosphere. But when you're a competitor out there and you, you have your teammate and, and you're seeing your teammates go to battle, it just does something to you. And, um, you know, we were dog tired after <laughs> after that uh, buzzer went off. So embrace is important after games like that, just to be able to, um, you know, kind of touch your teammates and, and just make sure that we we all know that the sacrifice is worth it. You know, not a lot of people can understand that because they're not part of team environment, more individualized in their work environment. But here in the team sport and the team aspect, when you can celebrate those moments as a team, because you know what it took. You know, we were in that locker room at halftime, you know, looking at each other, what are we going to do to get back into this game? You know, when they got off to that 22-point lead, we're looking at each other. So no one else is in that huddle but us and the coaching staff and, of course, management. But it just means something when you can come out with a win like that. And it is a regular season game, but we know the position that we're in. I keep saying that. And just kind of know uh, what it means to come out on uh, the other side of that, uh, you know, or to come on the other side of, of, of the matchup tonight victorious. So it feels good. Seconds with that embrace, speaking of tired, you both looked exhausted and happy 
what does a moment like that say about the two of you guys and where you are and where the team is? Where the team is or me and Luca? Because we get all the questions about me and Luca, so. Yeah, where the team is, or just are you asking about the embrace that me and Luca have? What are you, what are you getting at? Uh, just, just kind of wondering, you know, with you and Luca, and mm-hmm. the team that on, the role that it's on right now, and yeah. what you guys, you know, have been doing together as part of that, and, and you yourself are on a long stretch of, you know, being out there. So I just kind of wonder what a moment like that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I was just asking just for specifics. Um, yeah, no, at the end of the game, you know, Luca was like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, man. And, and that's why I just hugged him, man, at the end of the game because, um, you know, he left it all out there and he did all that he could. And um, everybody in this league is laboring in some sort of way, especially as we head into the playoffs. So uh, you, you just, I feel for him. I feel for uh, a lot of my teammates and I know they feel for me. So uh, that was kind of like, again, one of those in the moment type things for us as brothers to embrace each other. We know how hard we've worked and uh, how, how much work it took to get to this point in the season. You know, there, there's still nothing guaranteed in terms of our seating and where we're placed. Um, but we just know what it feels like to be on this side now together as a duo where we're committing to the defensive end, the offensive end, we're committing to, Uh, our leadership roles and we're committing to our teammates and they're doing the same. So I think you're seeing the reciprocity uh, when you see the laughs or you see the smiles or you see us feeling good about each other. And even when we're down, we're still giving each other positive encouragement and that goes a long way in any work environment. So when the game is done, the buzzer sounds, it's good to give your brother a hug. Let him know, hey man, you did a great job tonight. You left it all out the floor. Now let's go get some, let's get some food in us, go see our families and lead this game behind us. How fulfilling is it when you see guys like XO and PJ Washington make big shots and help you win these games? You weren't on this team last year. Uh, yeah, this is why they were brought in. Um, this is why we believe in them since the beginning of the season. Um, you know, Dante, excuse me, Dante, and then getting PJ at the um, at the trade deadline, getting Gafford, and and just building our camaraderie off of that after the trade deadline. Um, you know, because it could have gone either way. We could have failed miserably or we could be in the position where we're in now where we've worked ourselves into um, a pretty good rhythm. And uh, we know what to expect each, from each other every single night. And we're welcoming the healthy challenges of the best teams in the league. And this is the mentality that you want to have going into the postseason is we're ready to take on all challengers and we're ready to um, see the best of the best. And in order to be the best of the best, you have to beat the best. And that's that's our mentality now. And I think you see a lot of the pressure. It, it's created a lot of pressure on me and Luca, but we do a great job of dishing it off to our teammates too. They're aware of what goes on in our day-to-day lives of us being, you know, kind of the best players in the world. And um, I think we try to feed. I know I, I do, and Luca does a great job too, just feeding these guys confidence. And then the reward is on the other side of that. So whether they make shots or not, we're still going to believe in them. It's it's not going to change. So just got to keep that consistent approach. With that, Luca passes a, a look, uh, and with three seconds. Oh, you think he should have shot it? Huh? You think he should have shot it? Not, apparently not. <laughs> no, no, that sounded like you wanted him to shoot it. No, I'm just. You oh, let me find out. You like great players taking messed up shots for game winners. <laughs> okay. Force it. Force it. You're the best in the world. Force it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What's going through your head when you see him make that play, which was the right play? The right play, man. That's so subjective. I love it. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. When I see him make it, I just want to cut you off. When you saw that pass, you saw that's. Did you think that's the right play? Make or miss? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, as a as a basketball uh, junkie, right? Uh, I've seen um, a lot of situations. I've been a part of a lot of situations. Uh, sometimes it goes well when you get a ball up in situations like that. Sometimes it doesn't, but the trust has to be there, and the confidence and the energy of the basketball has to flow into your teammate. And again, it's not about the make or miss. It's just about the fundamentals that Dante exuded when he needed to make the shot balance, shot ready, was ready for the moment. Let's give him credit. Let's give Luca credit because everybody did their job necessary in order for that play to work. It, it, he could have missed and we would be sitting here in a different situation. 
but I think that's what makes competitive sports beautiful. Anything could happen. And, you know, fortunate enough, it went well on our end and Dante made the shot, but, um, it was a great pass by Luca. It was the, I won't call it the right play. It was the best play possible for us at that moment. If Luca gets it again, I don't know if he passes, but we'll just, we'll sit up here and, and play the X's and O's with wonderment. <laughs> Yeah, it felt like it. Yeah, <laughs> it felt like it. I think a lot of people were in the crowd were surprised, like, oh, it's only five o'clock. It's an overtime game here in Dallas. But no, it was it was beautiful, man. It was a great competitive game. Some ish talking going on back and forth too. So that got us going a little bit in the beginning of the game. Kind of going off that point, um, that statement, Dylan Brooks, Oliver, Luca. Luca kind of showed some of you know aggression, talking back to him a little bit. Um, how can you guys use that kind of you know? shoving and that kind of thing in the playoffs, like the motivation? Um, I think it's just about knowing our opponents well. Uh, I think I could have done a better job of preparing or uh, having a little bit of a deeper conversation with my teammates on what to expect from an Emi Udoka team, especially after we played them in Houston and we beat them the way we did. And, um, you know, they tried to junk up the game in the beginning, uh, leave it to the refs, and just the back and forth of um, just that ish talking, that banter. Um, it could go one or two ways. You just want to stay poised emotionally and uh, continue to work the game. And I think Luca did a great job of that. I think Dylan was trying to bait him to get his sixth <laughs> a few times. And, um, you know, it just comes with it. So just high IQ players, emotionally poised players go, go further along. Uh, so you just got to be a great thinker and be able to play through some of that physical contact. And that's what I've been getting ready for for these past few years. Um, haven't forgotten Ime Udoka's team, Boston Celtics beat me 4-0 and how they kind of just brought the physicality to us. And we didn't know how to respond at that time. And they were just more prepared IQ wise, or excuse me, X's and O's wise. And yeah, as a competitor, I don't forget things like that. So you know, systems carry on with coaches. So you can see that they've uh, taken on that Ime Udoka identity, sort of say. Uh, on a basketball court, uh, as a coach, he's just, I mean, it's similar to who he was as a player. You know, he knows what it takes to win. He knows how to get into guys' heads. You know, he's guarded the best of the best. Um, he's also been face to face with the best of the best talking ish. Uh, so if you're familiar with Ime Udoka's career, then you kind of know how he likes to approach it. And, uh, that's what makes, again, sports fun is, is getting to know your opponent like a chess player and being able to see three, four head, three, four moves ahead and be able to work their adjustments against them and keep working the game in our, in our benefit. Yes. So, Luke, I said good pass. Kyrie said uh, at the end of the game, you said, I'm tired, man. And how tired were you there? Very tired. Well, what's that moment like when obviously you guys rally, the wind secure, you go there, you guys get your arms around each other? It's a great moment. Uh, like I said, chemistry is big, so it was a great moment for everybody. Luka, talk about the trust that is going through um, out the team and how you all are just encouraging all the other players to step up and just the way the trust is cementing this mass team. Yeah, uh, I've been saying this for a while. Uh, we all trust each other. Uh, the trust is big. The chemistry is big. Uh, so we're on the roll right now. Dante shot. Any question in your mind that you were going to pass that ball or did you think for a split second I should shoot it? I mean, I was going to shoot it, but then I saw two people on me, so I saw Dante open. Of course, I'm going to pass. That's the trust we have right now. Luke, I asked Kyrie about this, but uh, Dylan Brooks was all over you tonight. Do you think that's something that when defenders are like that to you in the playoffs, that can give you guys more, I don't know, motivation or anything like that? Uh, I don't think you need more motivation when it's playoffs. Uh, when you hear the name playoffs, that's all the motivation to have. Uh, but, you know, uh, he's a great defender. Uh, you know, and you take on a challenge. What's it like for you when you see Kyrie getting the kind of groove that he did there in fourth quarter? Well, easy, man. I was just standing, uh, and he was just going. So, I love it. Luka Pomochnik, trainer, has been able to do some of the presentations for the team. You have to be able to do some of the things that you have to do. How do you feel about it? Super, super trainer. Uh, 
Mislim, res je dobro to odločitev, da nisem jaz nič pri tem, tako da prašte bolj bolj gor višji reprezentanci. Ampak nič, zaenkrat še ni pogledal po letju. Treba prvo končiti sezono, pa bomo pa vedno prej. Slovenska podpora tudi danes, ker nekaj gledalce iz Slovenije, kaj vam to pomeni? Veliko, zelo veliko. Na velikih tekmah so bližji slovenci, tako da to mi res veliko pomeni. Res je super, ker vem, slovensko zastavo, tako da mi veliko pomeni. Ste kaj utrujeni za nič tako čivanje v tekmah? Zelo sem utrujen, vem spati zdaj takoj. He made one of the more intense coaches in the league. It looked like you were giving a little bit of that intensity back to him late. What was going on there? I was talking to me in the first game there, so you know I'm going to go back. <laughs> What's the conversation? Are you telling me so they can find me? <laughs> I'm going to, you're going to put it there. There's no conversation. What's your fatigue level compared to other seasons? Feel less tired, more tired. It's okay. Uh, I mean, I'm now used to, to play all summer. Uh, a lot of games, so a lot of games under my legs, but I feel good. You're looking forward to to staying out of the play-in and, and the, the week of rest that it, it would. Yeah, you know, is that the goal? No, will help everybody. Man. Yeah, I hope so. Luca, what about playing with Kyrie? What makes it so easy for you? He's an amazing player. Uh, there's nothing much more than that. Uh, great guy, amazing player and it just helps everybody on the floor. Thank you.